Well, well, well. My name is 57 Bat Sibis. Now, all official, by the way. And it might not look like it, but this is actually me. So don't get all scared thinking you can hear me but can't see me. This is merely a disguise. But I should warn you, the story on how I've gotten here might be a little bit spooky after all. So you have been warned. Anyways, as pretty much almost every single story here, we're starting in Lumbridge. Where else? You know, the place to be the center of everything for me so far. I'm pretty sure that's far from the truth. Speaking of far from the truth, it actually started here in this beautiful screen. And everything that's about to happen is due to this message, as apparently I should come to the Varox Vest Bank to pick up my treat cauldron and flex my spooky attire this Halloween. I know some of these words. I do know what that means though. I will once more check my trusty map. And after getting a rough idea where to go, I was all off once more. Off to prepare, that is. As I've learned last episode, I might run into complications relatively quickly, as the game alone might already throw challenges my way, but the biggest one potentially being myself. And we've learned last episode that takes a lot of preparations. So through the power of not playing the game actually, I fill my inventory once more with a bunch of fish, chop some wood nearby, and I'm turning the raw fish into some emergency fish. After that, the only thing left to do, once again, making some room for adventure. I'm slowly getting the hang of this. So with all the preparations out of the way, and nice people still offering nice things, I think I'm ready to go. So I'm checking once more where this whole Varok is supposed to be and how I would even get there. But as far as I can tell, it's pretty much just walk north. So north I walk. So the journey begins, unsure what exactly I've signed up myself to walk into other areas. Also, I couldn't help myself, you know, like I see goblin. I hate goblin. Further down the road, I come across a very familiar field of cows, which brings back some good memories. For me, mostly. For the cows, not so much, I think. Also, I'm glad that already I have good memories to look back on, even though I am assuming have barely touched a thing in this game yet. That is kind of nice, but also really speaks for how long very basic things still take for me. But that's okay. First thing I come across is something very familiar actually. It's no seagulls this time, but it's chicken magic, I guess. My curiosity leads me inside the house, so, you know, I take a look around. But I can't really find anything too exciting. And I think because of that, I start beating up the owner. To this day, I wonder, am I a hero in this game? Some form of anti-hero? Am I the villain? It's really hard to say so far. I instantly flee the scene of the crime, past the chicken magic, and end up in nature-ish. There's human fields of something and normal fields of, well, grass, I guess. Gets a bit more exciting here, though, as we enter a crossroads in our journey. In life, really, maybe. I don't know. I do know, though, that this seems to be a very scary intersection. Could use some traffic lights, maybe, as there has been a massive accident. And a suspicious one, apparently. As I do search the card, because I, I wanted to help, obviously, right? But I'm surprised that I find very little there, which is a little odd for a traveling trader not to have anything to trade. I see. Or I actually don't see. Aha. Uh -huh. I should definitely further investigate, so once more we engage in conversation. This is where I get to know a guy with the first name Rat. He's way too busy to talk to me, though, so he instead sends me to the Wizard's Tower to the south which apparently is an amazing sight. I kind of disagree, but apparently I will. And yeah, I get a little bit of a hint what happened here. Maybe only a member can be a hero in this game. Who knows? Someone knows for sure. I know that this might have actually been for the better or else I would already be on a three hour mission to save this guy's card, which then turns out to be absolutely pointless in the end. And you know, standard stuff for me. But we were planning on doing something entirely different anyways. So I guess the game was saving me from getting side tracked once again so thanks I guess. While I was sitting here talking the other me figured out where to go next so further down the road we are going. I'm passing some sheep overall lots of nature here beautiful. Passing some wheat and couldn't help but right click mechanic and examine whatever that is. Looks like death on a stick but yeah it's it's really just a scarecrow. Once again that's maybe for the better as we're pretty much almost there you can already see. City is right ahead. I'm walking past some wizards after hovering over them. Little bit of a deja vu, so I just don't deal with this at all. Straightforward 
forward as little death as possible, hopefully. And so we reach the entrance to Varok. Looking very spooky already. Uh, naturally, the first thing I try to do is pickpocket a guard. <laughs> Turns out also, you know, you have to spend money to make money once more, you know, like we've been over this. So I entered the city and the first thing you instantly notice, this is definitely way bigger than the places I've been before. Down the main highway I go and due to my 21st century attention span, the first door that is open instantly makes me walk in. I might look into this a bit further maybe. But first I'm looking into a sword store. Here I learned that the next best sword I could get, which I assume is the upgrade for my current one, would deplete all of my gold resources. Despite being that rich, I don't know, it's weird. I leave the store before I would make any financially irresponsible decisions. Back out on the highway I also get the first glimpse of the current event going on as there is spooky stuff chasing down the street. And given the fact that I once more am just wandering around, I might actually look for that West Bank that I'm supposed to be going to. So I'm making my way further into the city, reaching its heart essentially, the marketplace, usually the center of such places, and I can kind of already see what I'm assuming is west of the bank. Looks like a spooky place to me. Got several people dressed up as like all sorts of stuff, plus one big ass bowl with candy on top of it. I think it's fair to say I've reached my destination. So let the spooky begin. First things first, I talk to a child in a costume. Or, well, it rather turns out I'm talking to multiple of them. But I think that's an accurate description when children are explaining the game to me. Or, in this case, the event and how costumes work. Essentially, I have to dress up and then I finally get the treat Cauldron mentioned earlier. And that combination allows me to now run through all of Gilnor and trick or treat people. But first I have to put on at least three of these pieces here. So after a very careful evaluation of what I have up for grabs here, this is what I end up with. I'm clearly going for a nothing fits as a whole style, which is very spooky, which is the point of this, right? So I did it perfectly. I'm also pressing the kids, which they're honest, right? So they must know what's up. So, let's get to the whole point of this. We want to fill this cauldron with treats. Those we get by trick-or-treating any adults in cities. So, the right-click mechanic now opens up a option to do so, which makes us approach the person. We say trick-or-treat, and of course, the first one's failing as a ghost is appearing. I have the amulet, so I try to talk to the ghost, but it's just the woman responding with some nonsense. Another attempt of talking to the ghost, you know, innocent question, is just being answered with, I don't I don't even know, like, am I not supposed to be able to, you know, understand these guys now? But oh well, uh, there's just one thing to do, and that is send a message for future guys that try to, you know, trick me. I might not have had my weapon equipped at that point, which obviously didn't stop me. Turns out actually equipping it might help a little. So, message sent, unless you don't want to end up buried underground. Better not trick me, guys. So, well, let's try out this whole cauldron thing a bit more, right? There must be some place where this is ending up successful now. But uh, I am not really getting far because there's one of these guys that just bother you every now and then showing up. Good old Captain Arnuf tells me he dug up an old treasure chest. Problem is, his old hands aren't as useful as they used to be. And he needs some help opening it. I do get a choice, but, well, I mean, I am the hero, right? Of course I'll help. He then quickly explains to me that there's three columns and we're playing some form of a third grader what fits together game. I think that's actually the level that I am traversing right now. So this is perfectly fine actually. Due to my massive intellect and my crazy gaming talent, I actually surprisingly end up doing this correctly. I think the captain was also very surprised or pleased, I don't know. Anyways we're getting something. I'm now the brand new owner of one gold ring. And given that I don't even have any rings yet, massive upgrade, obviously. Beautiful. So that out of the way, once more, trick or treat. I click on the next best guy right next to me and turns out Romeo can't be tricked or treated. This is where I learned that it isn't actually all adults. It's just the men or women. And as I later found out, some special personalities. Doesn't stop me from talking to the guy though. And of course, Romeo is 
looking for Juliet. Funny. I sadly have to report that I haven't seen her, which he was rather hoping I had. Asking whether she's a fugitive or owes him some money, I get a first feeling of where this conversation will go towards. As pretty much everything I say, the guy, on purpose or not, completely misunderstands. But Juliet is well one of his true loves and I should tell her once I see her that she is the love of his long and that he life to be with her. Sadly I ignored this additional red flag in this conversation and corrected him on what to say, which he was exhilarated about and uh, affirms me that I'm really good at this. I think I would know about that because I'm, I'm really not, but I'm being asked to start a quest. <laughs> on the first guy that I talked to. Beautiful. But, well, wouldn't you know, of course, I'll do it. This is followed up by him saying that he wants to kiss her a give. And kind of like in real life, the stupid people are funny to begin with, but get annoying very quickly. As we're doing the same thing again, where I'm really good at this while well, he's really just not even doing it. But uh, I need some more information. For example, where can I find said Juliet? Him asking me why I'm asking makes me realize this will be a very long conversation. He then tells me though that she's locked away in her father's house on the Sestvide of Varok. What the fuck did I sign up to? But she also loved it when he would sing up her balcony, which she would reward him with his own personal items. I have a follow-up question to that, where the answer that she was not exactly giving, but more like throwing with considerable force, the little kidder, Juliet, makes a lot of sense. Let's see if there's anything else you can tell me. And apparently there's so much to tell. She's the true love. He wants to spend life together, you know. There's so much you can tell me. And this starts a back and forth where he just says absolutely nothing at all. And my suspicion that he just can't remember is then being confirmed. From there, which thank god ends this conversation and officially starts the quest. Not gonna lie, I'm getting professional at being sidetracked. I love it. You know, I came here for this Halloween event and the first thing I do is I start an entire new quest. Don't know how I'm doing it, but amazing. But yeah, I really wanted to try out this whole trick or treat thing first. I started the quest, but we had more important matters at hand. So we click trick or treat on a woman once more, which this time actually ends up successful. I'm then also told that Party Pete in Falador loves trick or treating as well and has plenty of treats to hand out. I don't know either Falador nor Party Pete, but this was obviously a very subtle hint that I should maybe get to know both of them. Also, trying to trick or treat someone back to back, surprisingly, doesn't work. Real shocker. So, I wandered back off to find some more people to trick or treat. I'm coming across a man at the cauldron and yet another success. Looks like sending a message by beating up women definitely works. Don't, don't try that in real life, please. The guy then tells me about King Roald in Varok, as he's also generous with treats. That's just how I like my kings. So obvious next step, where would a king be? A place called Palace that has a lot of walls around it. Looks, looks good to me. Definitely worth a try. I had worse ideas, I think. And as the palace is literally just right around the corner, we show up and start trick or treating the guards. After saying my things, he tells me maybe this will be spooky enough, which, well, not quite state of confusion, but I wasn't too sure. Chat told me I received a bruised banana, which shows up in my inventory right now. After examination, I know that it doesn't look tasty. And that's about it. Now we've officially entered state of confusion. No idea what that is, what it does, and I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be eating it. But oh well, this hasn't stopped me in the past and will not stop me from further trick-or-treating. I also learned about Hetty in Remington, yet another target, I guess. Eventually I clear the whole court of, of treats, I guess. I don't know how to really say that. But I'm still looking for the king, right? Which I happen to just run into right when I enter the palace. Wasn't hard to find him, really. I once more say my thing, which he just loves, apparently. He also loves my costume which, I mean, obviously I spend a lot of time on it. Of course it's great. We are then philosophizing about the whole trick-or-treat business and how it's kind of weird, to be honest. And of course, the conversation is ending with him telling me about 
about the Duke Horatio in Lombridge. Finally, some words I actually have heard before. And here I also learn about that the special characters are giving me a hundred treats each, rather than just three or four as the other ones. So with the first big guy out of the way, it's just, well, time to do the smaller ones again. And after clearing out the palace, uh, it was time to well, clear out the city, I guess. As my tour of the city coincidentally well lined up with me trick-or-treating everyone. Which, to be honest, is kind of a nice way to get to know everything when you're here for the first time. Makes it a lot more efficient as well, for once. Yet somehow the message that you might not want to trick me seems to not have reached everyone. Unfortunate for that guy. I somehow eventually ended up where it all started, which I don't know if that's really what I was looking for, but oh well. It definitely reminded me that I was supposed to be doing something entirely different actually. So let's go back then, all the way to the center of the town and then we actually take a right turn for once, even though it was a left turn, but yeah. Point being, I'm not aimlessly wandering around anymore. Doesn't stop me from trick or treating though, but that has become second nature at this point, even though I have to say I'm still not too sure what to even do with all the treats I'm getting, but I'm sure I'll figure this out eventually, right? First, we have to do some adventures anyways. I'm equipping for myself to be a little bit less spooky and a little bit more adventurous. Other than that, I already am on said Sest Vide of Varok that I was so cleverly told earlier. As I don't really know what else to do, I'm just, you know, enter pretty much every house here, right? And there's not too many, so I guess there's not too much that could go wrong. One thing I'm taking a lot of care for this time now is I will look and check everything. I really want to avoid the situation where I pretty much end up next to the goal without realizing it. Which is kind of ironic because this is the main reason I even talked to this person here as I was sure this wasn't the right house. The more surprised I was to find out that this is Philippa, Juliet's cousin. And she's keeping an eye on her to make sure that the dashing Romeo doesn't just steal her away. So once more edging towards slight confusion, I <laughs> definitely took a bit more of a look around. I was sure that this would be a balcony where someone should be on, right? And it was this very moment that I realized there is another balcony and I would have almost actually missed it. I'm quite talented in that way. I feel like being right where I'm supposed to be, but not realizing it. Everyone's good at something, I guess. <laughs> glad this is mine. Anyways, wouldn't you know, this is Juliet, who's glad to hear that Romeo thinks of her and wants me to be her private mailman. And certainly I'll do it straight away. You know, straight away. That's what I made a name for myself here. So I get the message and once more, off I go. Being part of the postal office now. Exciting. So I'm walking back down the street, passing my spooky friends. Finally make it back to the marketplace. Here I couldn't really see Romeo right away, so I considered part of the story might be that he simply forgot about this whole thing and left. But turns out it was just me forgetting how he looked like, but yeah, here he is. But I'm really glad I found him given the fact that I then spent four minutes in another enlightening conversation with classics like him misreading the word affection for affliction and assuming she thinks he's sick. But after him then rereading everything, we uh, learn about the father of Juliet is opposing the marriage, of course, and will kill him if he sees him again. Now things are getting a bit more interesting. But turns out there's another another father, Father Lawrence, who could possibly help. Confused yet? It's only getting better by Romeo then just completely ignoring that fact that there was a chance and he's just, you know, completely ignorant about that fact. As I said, really enjoyable this conversation. As I have to keep going back and forward saying the word Father Lawrence I think felt like 17 times until finally Romeo somehow comes to his senses and tells me that I should maybe look for said Father Lawrence. Surprising. Asking the question where to find him was a big mistake as I'm being told pretty much everything I didn't ask for until he finally tells me where to go with a bunch of questionable words once again but I should look for a church to the east north. To avoid any further conversations I say okay thank you and leave real quick. Next step is relatively simple I guess we look to the northeast or well east north I guess 
and figure out where to take lots of steps towards. So I start walking east, then I sprinkle in a little bit of north, and all the while I'll try to figure out which building could be a church. It's a little hard to reproduce my thought process exactly, which is definitely a good argument for all these guys asking for a runescape stream. I might just say for now would be a bad idea, but I'm definitely considering doing some form of a live episode or there's other potential ways of doing this. But my stream for now will stay all these other games we don't talk about. And while you were listening to my expertise in finding excuses to not do further content, I ended up in a museum of some sorts. I was sure that could have been a church, but yeah, a little bit further down the road, a building that is much more likely to be a church shows up. And wouldn't you know, the inside also resembles a church really well, actually. Also, there's people sleeping. That sounds about right, yeah. Furthermore, Father Lawrence. Fabulous. I sadly interrupted his sermon, but you know I have very important matters at hand. He insists on being very busy though. I'm taking a look myself as I am not sure if this is really busy work. I wouldn't have even have to do that because the cutscene actually. Guess the game didn't expect me to deliver the joke as well as well the game does itself. Fair enough, I can see why that is. We come to some sort of an agreement though as I just need a little bit of help and then I'm out. He definitely seems to remember Romeo. Then again, who could forget that guy? Anyways, Father Lawrence has an idea. A potion to make her appear dead. Apparently sounds a bit creepy to me, says the pumpkin head. Plan is pretty simple we make her appear dead and then she'll be taken to the crypt and then Romeo can collect her. Next thing I have to do I have to go to the apothecary and tell him Father Lawrence sent me and I need a cadaver potion. Sounds beautiful. I can't but notice that besides the strong overtones of death this becomes quite a love story. Also yet again I highly questioned what the hell did I get myself into here. But oh well apparently we are not really questioning much in game as we are now off to the apothecary. I'm going back into the sunlight, another in-game exclusive occasion, and let's find an apothecary, shall we? And wouldn't you know, after a atypical short amount of time, I actually find it. All that is left, I just have to make my way back to the main highway, as it was pretty much just right around the corner there. I want to take this little bit of downtime to just appreciate the fact that I'm doing a quest that involves people dying and crypts and whatnot, while the Halloween event is going on. This is just, once more, I couldn't have planned did any better myself. Touche runescape. Touche. I'm still loving this game. And wouldn't you know we are also pretty much there. So sideward step move once more and conversation with the apothecary. I have to say all these options they sound appealing but let's talk about Romeo and Juliet. I say the things I was supposed to say which the apothecary also didn't really question he's just getting right to the point and tells me the ingredients which also sound very ensuring. Wing of rat, tail of frog, ear of snake, and horn of dog kind of sounds like a children's riddle. The odd one out or all the odd things, I don't know. Also, dead animal part components are usually assigned for the good stuff. Thank God he has all of these things already. Wouldn't even know where to get any of those. All we need to bring to the table are cadaver berries. It's getting better and better. The obvious question where to get those berries is met with the information that some kids found some at the southeastern Varrock mining pit. The answer to the more interesting the question whether those are dangerous isn't sounding too reassuring as he certainly wouldn't advise drinking the potion we're making. But let's be honest here, that isn't really any of my personal concerns, so let's go. In true Halloween style, I trick or treat my way down south the highway until we make it as south as one could get. So now we make it as east as we can get. This is where I find out that these guys, they mean business. Not the most friendly people, but well, good thing I brought my emergency fish. Knew that would come in handy eventually. And also makes me not feel too bad about wasting two hours last episode learning the whole emergency fish mechanic. Anyways, cadaver berries. Pretty much right in front of me actually. I pick some and I guess that's it. To be honest, I don't even know how many we need. So I just assumed that was the whole idea and we're walking backwards. But hey, I learned about my journal that apparently I am having. And in that I'm clearly stating that I should bring these berries back. So bringing back we do. I sadly ran out of ironically my running points so I assumed this part would be a bit harder but turns out not running straight through all of these angry guys makes us a little bit easier. But guess what? Emergency fish. I know. 
I'm a genius. So I trick and treat my way back to the apothecary and a little bit of a prolonged sideward stepping move brings me back inside and conversation time. Apparently I did well, give him the berries and he is doing some shaking. I'm given the potion, but who knows what's coming my way, so maybe something for free? And what a guy actually gives me a potion for free. Might come in handy, who knows. On my way out, this comedian thought it was funny to trick me, which, well, we all know where that leads to. But let's not get distracted with petty street brawls. I have to make a love story possible through fake killing someone and, you know, uh. The following conversation is yet another incredible exchange of world-changing ideas. As we're kind of going over the whole idea of the whole plan once again. Sadly, Romeo not too interested in trying a little bit beforehand, but he's surprisingly up to speed what he has to do once Juliet is fake dead. So hopefully for the last time, off I go. Very curious what this is going to end up with, but I'm obviously not letting any opportunity of a little bit of a trick and treat go, right? To be honest, still haven't really figured out what the main objective of this whole idea is. Is it the quest? Is it the treats? Who knows? Maybe it's the friends I made along the way. Kind of like man's best friend right here. What a transition, I'm insane. As I try trick or treating though, I'm somehow turned into a rat, sadly, and the scary dog with the knife in hand was chasing me around, so I ended things a little bit more decisively. So let's not get distracted, shall we? <clears throat> I would never. So we're back in the house and I guess this is the father? Wondering why there's a random person in his house is answered very convincingly through I'm just a friend. A sentence you love to hear usually. And he tells me to make sure that there's no funny business going on here. I can see it in his hawk-like eyes, cat-like ears and dog-like nose. Sounds like we are making a potion all over again. I'm asking whether he wants to say that he looks like an animal, which turns out surprisingly wasn't what he wanted to say, he was just having senses of an animal. He doesn't miss a thing. Even notices my potion, which he even identifies as some sort of potion. Not bad for an old guy. And merely my incredible acting gets me through selling it as a cough medicine. I couldn't help it but say that one sip of this and the lights go out, but yeah, I mean, gotta do what you gotta do. The old guy can barely think about sleep though, and he hopes that I have no intention of sleeping in his house. He didn't really buy this just a friend thing, I guess. Then he sends me off by telling me I would get a bill if I fell asleep. Fair enough. So we go upstairs. Surprisingly, I don't have to look too long this time until I find what I'm looking for. So let's talk to Juliet and tell her about an interesting proposition suggested by Father Lawrence, no less, whose name seems to hold some value around here. I have a cadaver potion suggested by Father Lawrence. I further elaborate our amazing plan, which she doesn't seem to be too convinced initially. But you know, let's say Father Lawrence once more, which uh, somehow seems to do the trick. I don't, I don't know what's up with this guy. But anyways, she gets the suspicious potion and her hoping that Romeo can remember to even get her from the crypt might be, I think, everyone's biggest concern here. As also Juliet's biggest concern is me telling him so he for sure will understand what to do. Clearly a bigger problem than nearly dying and would you know another cutscene that this game is getting more and more amazing by the second here we essentially learn that the cousin is now also in on the plan and she's the one that's supposed to be selling this reassuring us by allegedly being quite the actress so a bottoms up and let's go i guess Women falling to my feet as per usual. Meanwhile, we have to go over this whole acting thing a little bit more, which is taking a surprising high amount of work considering her great acting. But we'll eventually get it right, I guess, as it was at least good enough for the guy to show up investigating the commotion, which, well, he's really sad about. And then things are moving rather quick, actually, as we are ending the cutscene and find ourselves alone on the balcony. And I have to say, a slight bit confused as well, as is tradition here. Quick little catch up with the cousin. The only thing she's concerned about is her acting skills. I have some of my own and convincingly tell her that she was incredible. And she overall seems very happy with the situation. Also asking me whether I've told him yet kind of brings us back to 
what we should be doing now, no? So let's get going. Can't wait to find out where we will end up with this whole idea. Downstairs I can't help but also converse with the father. His only words of wisdom is merely regret. Pretty sure there's a deeper lesson here somewhere, but I have no time to think about such things. As a headless guy walks past, I have to say for such an old game, costumes I see, they're incredible actually. I obviously trick or treat once more, then we're off to the grand finale. I eventually make it to Romeo, instantly telling him the good news and all he has to do now is, well, pick her up. He surprisingly seems to remember. Yeah, just kidding. He obviously doesn't know and are obviously going over the whole idea once more, where he's obviously too scared to go alone. And the hero I am, I obviously tag along. And thank God, cutscene. Don't have to look for anything. We instantly spawn into the crypt where Juliet is right over there. We get to see some incredible camera work just beautiful. It's like I'm really there actually. Romeo then finally starts walking over ever so dashing. Even brought a bouquet and it's not bad actually. Then for some reason the cousin also shows up. I don't even know where she came from and why she's here and okay. Romeo meanwhile seems to have kind of forgotten what's really happening which is when then Philippa makes her move. Romeo seems intrigued. She says it's a shame about Juliet, but perhaps they can meet up later. Why not? And the story ends with Romeo asking, who's Juliet? And that brings us back to real life within the video game and the quest complete and me having many questions, which I think none will be answered. But I will still try, so might as well just ask Romeo himself, right? He assumes Juliet has died, but her cousin and him are getting on well though and he thanks me for the help what a kind guy but that's actually just raising further questions than anything else so yeah Nice. But there's one other place that I can maybe find some answers. First step, the father, who is supposing I'm pleased with myself now. And that's all he says, which makes no sense, as this is pretty much the outcome he wanted all along. Juliet not being together with the guy, you know, the main reason why this whole fiesta even started. Again, further questions are being raised. Let's see if the main characters of this whole shebang can bring some light in. Let's start with the cousin. She's pleased to report that she is getting along really Really well with the dashing Romeo, but it's a pity about Juliet. She missed out there, she reckons. Alrighty then, I guess that's just your average girl friendship. Juliet is reporting that she sat in that old crypt for ages waiting for Romeo, but to I think no one's surprise, he never showed up, and all she got was indigestion. What the fuck? Then she tells me to leave before she calls the father, which once more, so many questions. How did I end up being the bad guy, for example? Example is one that comes to mind. So leaving with a even bigger than ever omnipresent state of confusion, I guess we'll close this chapter as there's nothing else to do. I mean, I've really tried. Outside of more confusion, I wanted to get some clarity. There was a place that a lot of you told me to visit once I was here. I was also told about this city a lot, so I guess let's find out what all the fuss is about, shall we? I have to say, the entrance to this place, not too exciting. I mean, it's just this whole massive building in the middle that's interesting, I think. But once further inspecting said building, things get a bit more exciting. I would say. Not only is chat going incredibly fast here, there's also a massive amounts of people there. Something I'm not used to so far. But thank god there's a grand exchange clerk who can now give me a little bit of a TLDR, which is a relatively good explanation of what I was doing, as it was really a lot to read, so I just kind of skimmed through it, I would say. But there's no better way to learn than actually do it myself. So this is the screen I was welcomed by, and to get some sort of idea what I was doing, how about we're selling a copper ore? That was the point in time that I learned that you are not allowed to trade with other players in the beginning of the game. As you need 10 quest points, I'm currently at 9, a skill total of 100, which I'm pretty sure I have, but there also is a 20 hour timer, which I'm definitely not above yet. Which then ends my grand exchange experiment way quicker than I expected it to. But well, at least I've seen it and I'm definitely prepared once I will come here the next time. I guess. Guess my dreams of riches and becoming a RuneScape entrepreneur, they're on ice for now, but there's still treats to collect, which has been more of a side quest so far, but 
well, with everything else out of the way, first sort of business I check out this big cauldron. As the kids have explained earlier, this is where I give my treats to. Reward for that is a Halloween wig, which then answers the question what I need all those treats for. Essentially, there's a set to collect and finish eventually once you collected enough treats. And also the cauldron changes its appearance once, you know, the community has collected enough of treats together. I don't know if that unlocks anything. Sadly, the event was over by the time I'm now making this video, but I guess some of you might know, maybe? Which leaves just one question open, actually. What the hell do I do with bananas and socks that I eventually get from trick-or-treating? One thing that was evident relatively early even to someone like me, they seem to have some worth as there's lots of people constantly asking to buy those. They call them spookies and apparently they're worth between 10 and 25k. But but this is what I call spookies, or I don't, I don't really know what's happening here once more one of these confusion moments as I, I mean they're obviously players but <laughs> why are they lined up why do they all look the same why are they facing me <laughs> I, I don't know if they really are but see that's spookies even more questions arise as once I step outside of the way they keep moving I don't I I, <laughs> I really don't know what to say and of course in the middle of all of this chaos one of these weird guys shows up apparently today is my lucky day and he's donating to the victims of crime to atone for his past actions and i get an uncut sapphire insane maybe i don't know <laughs> one thing i also don't know is why the hell are people collecting all these socks and whatnot so what better way to find out than ask my fellow gamers? What follows is all sorts of conversations happening at the same time, talking all over each other and across each other and alongside each other. And I wasn't even sure if anyone was particularly answering to me. All I know is from the evidence collected from, I guess, hundreds of messages at this point, there is four different spooky ingredients that eventually are combined into a terrifying charm. What's that or what is it good for? I don't don't know. All I know is I want to do that. At least I think so. So my plan was fairly simple at this point. I visit all of these special characters that I was told about. They must definitely have something to do with this charm. I'm pretty sure. And we'll see what happens along the way, I guess. And for those amongst you that don't remember all these names I told you earlier, there is someone like me who once again actually was using a physical piece of paper and a pen in, in real life, like on my desk right here, and wrote them down. I, I don't know why I do this, and I don't know why RuneScape makes me do this. Just for some weird reason, I have this urge to write things down. It's, it's so weird. But it worked, so can't argue with that, I guess. And while I was telling you how I struggle with modern technology, technology and use middle age technologies instead, we made it to Lumbridge, as here's one of the guys that I do know who they actually are. Also, you know, I, I can resist the urge to attack these guys whenever I see them, which funny enough levels me up, but also brings a certain joy for some reason. Anyways, I trick and treat my way forward up to the second floor of the castle, as here we find the duke. I do my thing as per usual, to which he insists on treating me, twice actually, as he's had enough of all these tricks being played, which is fine by me, I guess. And he's glad that this whole thing brings a lot of tourism to Lumbridge. Quite the business duke he is. And after asking where else I should maybe go, I'm once more being told about Party Pete. Must be quite the guy. I bank another 100 treats, but right here I make a little mistake, let's say. And a poor choice of conversation text brings me to this question. Sure, why not start another quest when we haven't even done the whole trick or treat Halloween? Halloween thing yet. Sounds familiar? I might have maybe mentioned before that I'm really good at sidetracking myself. Anyways, it has been done and there was a talisman found in the cellar. I'm being shown said talisman. He's then revealing that the Order of Wizards over at the Wizards Tower I love that place. I've been on the hunt for magical artifacts recently, and he wonders if this might just be the kind of thing. At least I am once more being asked whether I even want to do that. Sure, no problem. I'm then told where to find the tower, which after last time I don't need any help with that. I found it multiple times in a row actually. And I have to look out for Sedridor, which I'm pretty sure I also met the last time. So the whole disaster from last episode more and more turns out to be just a big preparation. Beautiful 
wonderful. The Duke gives me the talisman. Obviously, I'm very trustworthy. I mean, I saved this party and all. And off I go once more. Up to the bank, actually. As the accidental adventure we now started, maybe requires a little bit of light traveling. I keep all the Halloween-related things I might need. And of course, my emergency fish. And let's once more visit my nemesis the wizard tower so through the south gate into the swamp quick frog kill you know because of the bones deeper into the swamp good old raid group of course the unicorn cinematic walk across the bridge and you know what i have enough fish i'm feeling lucky today let's see if i've still got it and turns out due to my incredible skill acquired last time i was here i reign supreme anyways inside of the tower we go down the stairs and i remember correctly this is exactly where sedri door is at so let's see what this talisman is all about i get a very warm welcome from the guy i make sure he really is the guy as you know the duke sent me with important business but i'm not really trusting the guy in front of me but he wants to prove himself to me which i find nice you know let's see what he got he then proceeds to tell me my name but then again i'm a well-known hero around here or maybe he has just seen the twitter poll i don't know it seems to still be enough for me and i give him the talisman and apparently we have some sort of last piece to a puzzle on our hands here definitely intrigued to see that puzzle now apparently we are now able to find the forgotten essence mine i then foolishly ask what the hell any of the words he just said mean and just like that i'm stuck in a history lesson he then goes on about rune crafting and how it once was a thing and then it wasn't a thing anymore and then they rediscovered it again and then they burned down a tower apparently and with the destroyed tower also all the knowledge about where to find the essence for the runes was also destroyed or lost but guess what the puzzle piece comes in clutch and might be how we find that out again so what happens now someone might ask apparently it is critical we share this discovery with the associate Aubrey as soon as possible. And wouldn't you know, he runs a rune shop in the southeast of Varrock. I wonder what that place looks like. He hands me his package and wishes me best of luck. I think I might steal that line. That's pretty good, actually. Regardless, back to Varrock. I'm excited. So, cinematic walk across the bridge. Unicorn, raid group, swamp, more swamp, south gate, casually beating up a woman. Then realizing, even though I walked past the guy countless of times, that the staff of the Lumbridge guy is actually a question mark. My mind was blown. Anyways, nostalgic field of cows. The guy still doing chicken magic. The scary intersection. The scare crow. The scary dudes outside of the city. And once more, we're back. We turn to the east. And given the fact that we are in the south already, I'm now just using my wall hack to figure out where someone with a rune shop could be. Further down the street, I actually find a very familiar rune-ish symbol outside of a store. And inside, wouldn't you know, the guy Aubrey. I tell him that I have a package for him, which he's eager to get his hands on. So I hand him the package, which he finds incredible. On a completely other top, Apparently, if the research of his and the one from Cedridor is being combined, it might be a good thing. No idea how we ended up on that topic now. But anyways, I play package service again, and I'm happy to announce I have to go all the way back again. But not before paying a visit to the cauldron and getting rid of some of my treats, which rewards me with a witch's hat and a witch's top. Which, to be honest, looks pretty good, actually. Anyways, enough clowning around. We go back past the scarecrow, guy with the chicken magic, through the swamp eventually reaching my boy again. I hand him Aubrey's notes and apparently good news. I'm double checking if it really is. And guess what? Because of me, there finally is a proper source of rune essence again, whatever that means. And if I want to go to the mine, all I need to do is ask. He then also tells me that the talisman can be used to craft air runes. All I have to do is bring it to the air altar south of Falador, along with some rune essence. The plot thickens. Also, the talisman can guide me to where the altar is and i will find other altars as well while i'm on my adventures letting me craft other types of runes great thanks regardless i complete the rune mysteries getting one quest point an air talisman and rune essence mine access as i don't really know what that is might as well try it out i ask Cedritor to send me there and after some runescape classic sound effects we end up in some snowy mountain or gray underground 
cave. I really I had no idea what that is. After exploring the mountain or cave a bit more, I eventually figure out it's about these big things. Of course it is. It always is. Once I make it there, I learn about this is something you're mining. And obviously I don't have a pickaxe with me. So nothing left then go back. In retrospect, maybe that was a good thing, because God knows what else I would have then started doing if I had pickaxe with me and gotten essences and you know. Let's focus on the task at hand, shall we? There's still three more big treat givers out there. So we make it to Draenor Village. Here we're supposed to be looking for Aggie. The town is relatively small and I've been here before, so shouldn't be too hard hopefully. While hacking my way across all the rooms, I quickly find her. So just around the corner, we enter a house, I say my catchphrase, get complimented for my fabulous costume, and once more we end up with Party Pete and Falador. I'm getting more and more intrigued by that guy. So I better be going, so we can meet him, right? But first we have to go just right over to Remington, which is pretty much just adjacent down this path that I also have some fond memories about, as there used to be a time where this guy would have jumped the gun attacking me. Somehow he's not doing that anymore. Anymore. But the wizards are fighting now. That's new. Anyways, further down the road, we eventually make it to our destination. And once more with the wall hack. Which leads us to this corner of the place, followed by a bunch of other, uh, subjects. Once more with the pickup line. Hetty asking whether I was seeking for tricks, actually. Quite frankly, I was turned into critters or met a ghost more than enough. And I'm hoping for some treats instead. After that, a lot of vague warnings that there might be other questions stuff going on than just spooky tricks. We eventually find common ground in giving me treats. I think that is okay. Also, apparently I should look for someone called Party Pete in Falador. Sounds interesting. Might look into it, actually. I then try to sip a little bit of that soup, which apparently I'm passing for now. Well, fine. I have enough food in my inventory anyways. Right outside, I get to know Da Vinci, who's currently drawing by the sea. He then blabbers on some nonsense about humiliation and, you know, in the end of the day, I think he wants me to be a member to even talk to him. Well, fine. Message received. I have to meet greater and bigger personalities anyways. Falador it is. And I'm definitely interested what Party Pete will turn out to be. So we pass the meanwhile fighting wizards. And you know for old time's sake, might as well. And not only am I once more leveling up, but once the guy falls over, he also leaves me his cape. How nice of him. Putting the cape on increases my defensive stats by a whopping one. Amazing. But hey, upgrade is upgrade. I'll take that. And I have to say it actually it looks sick. Definitely adds to my character. So I'm not even complaining. More importantly, we're pretty much right at the gate to Falador. I've never been here so I adequately greet the guards by tricking or treating them and after getting to know everyone and exchanging numbers you know the usual we move on and this is the point of my journey where I now try to wall hack my way through this whole city and I have to say boy this place is huge so I started running around looking into houses checking out the beautiful place and all it has to offer for example this here place which is some sort of marketplace or town center or whatnot and for some reason it blasts out your eardrums and people are turning into purple blobs 24 7. What the hell? This place might be the embodiment of my states of confusion. Even better that every single trick or treat failed and made me a different type of animal here. Lovely place. Let's rather wall hack some more houses shall we? And that's what I did. I kept looking into every house, every floor of every house and even the most unlikeliest corners of the city were looked into until I end up where I started and the past 15 minutes were well invested. I guess, for future endeavors. I learned that by now, that everything I do eventually becomes useful, but I haven't found anyone that even came close to the name of Party Pete. Nor have I seen a party really, or anything Halloween related, so I don't know. But there was one place that I haven't really fully checked out, as it seems to have multiple floors, which might have covered something that I was actually looking for. So I then spent another 10 minutes running around in this castle place. Not only does everything
everything look the same. It has multiple layers and the multiple floors. It is also, as you can see, as far away from Halloween or a party as a place could possibly be. Once more, time well spent. And so far, the most successful place was the weird everyone's teleporting place. Nice. But what could be the place to gain information? Exactly. A bar. If anyone knows something about a party, it's definitely the folks in here. But all I'm told really are things I already know. Maybe the guy burnt off here knows what's up. He definitely looks like he's up to date. The only thing he's doing though is insisting that I should buy us a drink. Fine, I know how these things work. A little quid pro quo, might as well. I obtain one beverage, which rests comfortably next to a rotten banana and some socks in my backpack. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. I then hand over the alcoholic beverage, where all that happens is that he is appreciative. And upon asking him once more, he just wants more to drink. I see how it is. Once again, time well spent. So pretty much the only thing left to do is just check every corner and every house once more, as the most likely thing is that I have once more missed the obvious and simply walked past the guy way before. And already while approaching this area, it dawns on me that given that there is actual Halloween decorations out, I did exactly that once again. Fantastic. And look who it is right inside the infamous party Pete. All right, let's see what he got for me. Understandably loves to see me. And we didn't make plans about a Halloween party. Given the fact that I am quite the party saver so far, I'm obviously up for this part. But he then also tells me that I've now officially visited all the special characters there are to visit. But there's still more trick or treating to do if I wanted to. Right after I try to make sense of this whole room, especially this chest, which has one rune inside. Also the lever right next to it, which also looks very intriguing to be honest. Well, might as well ask the professionals. Party Pete gives me a little bit of a TLDR that essentially you stuff things into the chest and then release a hundred balloons, which then have those items inside of them for everyone to grab. Definitely sounds interesting. Might check that out one day. For now, there's but one thing to do. I am for once not forgetting about having this spell and we teleport back to Lumbridge. From here, things are pretty straightforward. Nostalgia nostalgic cows, guy still busy with the chickens, then pass the scary guy straight into Varrock, back to the cauldron, and deposit all the treats I've now gotten. For my troubles, I'm getting a witch's robe, boots, and cape, and some Halloween mask set. Before I could try out any of these, I was once more bothered by one of those weirdos. Oh look, it's Party Pete's a little older looking brother, Posty Pete, with an urgent message telling me that Molly needs my assistance. Of course, anything for Molly, who she is and as you can hear we're being teleported to one of these fantastic mini games what felt like an eternity and was an excruciating long explanation of why we are here and what we are doing I found myself playing one of these scam claw machines goal was to find the exact copy of Molly which is her evil twin wreaking havoc I successfully jail her which I am supposed to do and that's that hard to tell what exactly that gesture was for my troubles I'm rewarded with two uncut emeralds and with my current knowledge I can't tell which the bigger scam is the claw machine or getting two emeralds for jailing a person but I guess I'll find out in time it's time now to finally conclude the Halloween story though you see the chat is constantly filled with people spamming that they want to buy these weird ass items and given that the money they offer is slightly more than I currently own I thought to myself might as well get rid of one of these bananas I have more than enough anyways I I traded the first best guy and upon offering a banana, I was reminded that I can't trade yet, which for the next 6 hours and 27 minutes also includes straight up trading. Deeply saddened, I have to close the trading window and my dream of riches delayed for now. I then banked all my stuff and made up a new plan. If I can't sell these, I might as well collect all the single pieces and create one of these charms. Apparently there's some worth to that anyways. I do have the banana, the wool and the sock already. And the only thing missing apparently was an egg. At least according to the massive amounts of spam messages I deciphered over all these hours. One fellow gamer also told me that apparently the folks in Varok have a higher chance to achieve those items. So, well, I'm here already anyways. I would have gone any other place regardless and it seemed to work
work. Unfortunately, I was filling my inventory with bananas at that point, but given my usual success rate when I make up plants in this game, not too bad. And even to my surprise, just a few attempts later, this kind woman here gives me an egg. A spooky one. An incredible success as the treats I've gotten in the process also unlock the final reward from the cauldron. But what is most impressive to me is that one of my own plans for once seems to work out. So I unbank all the ingredients I need, which leaves but one thing to do, figure out how to really craft this thing, but that seemed to have done the trick. I combined the questionable items together to create something that could scare death himself. And I am now the proud owner of a terrifying charm, proudly wearing it already. Upon examination it tells me it will hold up three more tricks, as that's pretty much the use case for this item. Tricks don't work on you anymore as long as you're wearing this, well for the next three times. Was that worth all these troubles? I don't know. As per usual, I'm very unsure if any of this is ever worth, but I could dress up as a witch now, kinda like these guys. But I got to see a lot more of the land and I got to meet a lot more people and actually I I finished many more quests than I expected to in this episode. So I think as per usual, even though I don't see it now, I potentially made a lot of progress, maybe.